Okay. Hello everyone. Welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Week, the team meeting today. We are the 8th of August, 2023. Around the table, we got myself, Damien Duportal, Hervé Lemeur, Mark Weitz, Stéphane Merle, Bruno isn't there, he's in holidays, lucky him, and Kevin Martins. Uh, let's get started with announcements. The weekly release 2.418. The build process failed uh, during the git push tags. It looks yes. like there has been a commit pushed during the release. It's not the... It, oh, <laughs> it's you, Mark. Okay. So you're responsible for relaunching the release <laughs> now. No, no, I well, so because I don't have permissions on the on the VPN, I can't relaunch the release, but I am happy oh. to take the blame for the, the damage I did. And it was intentional. I wanted okay. a change this change to arrive. Okay, let's restart it now. We'll do it in live. That will be interesting. Okay. Um now has failed. the is the is the so the tag was not pushed. Therefore, exactly. is it safe to that it will not reuse the tag? It will, it will, or it will still use the 2.418, or is the tag 2.418 burned so that we won't be able to use it? That's what I never remember. Um, we can we can look at the steps that were already done. Okay. Let's the system connect. Uh, do you to um, I'm I'm sure we we can update. We should be able to work on updating the Git configuration so it will rebase uh, properly next time. Yeah, well, there's there's already an, a ticket opened on this one by Basel, uh, so the question then becomes, um, okay, four seventeen is still the the latest version on the mirrors, so the war file has not been published to the mirrors. So I'm pleased to yep. see that. Yeah, yes, uh, it fell way before. The question is, what is the version, the latest version published in the Maven metadata on Artifactory? That's the real question. Ah, if okay. we started to push metadatas or Git tag, then we are uh, we can consider this release burn and we need to increment. But otherwise, it should be okay. It means we haven't pushed anything. Okay, and so if I check the Maven repository under releases, and go to the correct location, I should be able to confirm that based on the palm of Jenkins core. Mm -hmm. It's using org.jenkins-ci as its parent. Okay, so org.jenkins-ci. Org, and, and you're going to read the log to see if it pushed anything to Yep, absolutely. Uh, to uh, Artifactory. Okay, so I can do a se separate verifications. Opening or the release dot... pipeline. Whoops. And... So uh, it's it org plan. Jenkins. Oh, oh, org.jenkins-ci.main. Okay, the release was prepared, but the commit were on, it fell during the push commit step. I don't see any anything pushed, and um, the release wasn't staged, neither verified. So we should be able to just restart the process. Can you confirm? You see, um, you see the okay, same. I on, I on do factory? not see. I so I can confirm that I do not see anything in org Jenkins ci main Jenkins core beyond. 2.1417. So I think we can restart. Perfect. So let's trigger a new top level release build. Okay. Okay. And that one will start a new downstream release build. Let's look at the console output to see the first. Uh, I want to see the parameters. Weekly is correct, yep. so it will use 417 plus one. Okay, good. Okay. Um, 
release process restarted as nothing was pushed. Okay, so let's see in two hours if everything uh, is working as expected. Uh, just a reminder, next week, the weekly meeting is canceled. Um, I still don't seem to have the permission to delete the event from the shared agenda. Uh, may I ask you, Mark, to we'll remove it. it? Yes. Cool. Thanks. So next, this is next week's meeting. Exactly. Uh, okay. The 15th of August. Right. Okay. Uh, yes, public holiday, right? Absolutely. Okay, meeting has been deleted. Cool, thanks. So we'll see in each other. That has been, uh, so that means we will have a two week uh, milestone. Any question, other announcements? No, okay. So let's proceed to the upcoming calendar. Next weekly will be released next week, uh, the version 2.419, 15 of August, 2023. Uh, next LTS, as usual, I forget, but let me copy past from last week. So 9 of August, we will have the release candidate for the next LTS. Uh, and 23 of August. So looks like I will be the person from the infra that day. Ah, uh, no, Hervé and Stefan will be there, so. No problem here. Security releases. Do we have announced security releases? We don't. Not good news. And I don't see a major event for now. Anything else, folks, to add? Yeah, so DevOps world. We lost Mark. What? Mark, are you back or was it only me? You froze again back. Oh, weird. Hmm. So I'll be out the 14th of September at DevOps World Tour. But that's that's the next major event in my world. World in September. Cool. Let's look back at the release. The release started and the version is 2.418. Perfect. So we can continue the meeting. Um, what are the tasks we're able to finish? First, we helped a lot of users to un to release their plugin by unblocking uh, the their account on Artifactory. Uh, so we have at least two closed issues for separated. We had two or three users on the aggregated issue. Uh, so yeah. Uh, more on this with the work in progress on that area. We were able to fix a minor security request uh, from the GenSec security team. Uh, there were cases where um, even if you were reaching some URL, even in HTTPS, you were downgraded to HTTP before being redirected to HTTPS again. So that has been fixed. That was a uh, uh, let's say uh, a nice one uh, because we had to first search in Fastly, then on ingress level, and then in the end it was the back end, uh, the back end container on Nginx. So we only applied. We might have the same issue on other Nginx based web server. The trick was to use what's what set up a directive on Nginx named Absolute Redirect that tells Nginx when it redirects from um, uh, without the trailing slash and it redirects to the trailing slash to use a relative path to be sure that your HTTP client rebuild the full URL and avoid downgrading or changing host name. Is there any question on this one? No, okay. And I don't remember, I think Hervé, you took care of the fourth one. Yes. That was an account uh, issue. Okay, let's remove the triage label. 
the triage is for any incoming issue that we want to triage during the next uh, meeting. Any question on the tasks that were done? Did I forget something or are we okay? Nope, okay. Let's continue with the work in progress. Um, a first status on the artifactory issues, I've contacted GFROG because right now there is no easy way uh, to fix the issue globally. I tried to run a batch on a subset of users and the setting was changed two or three days after. So I'm not sure what is creating that mess. Um, I just received a response from GFROG just before the meeting and it looks like they want to to find a, a time on my agenda to run a, a direct session. So they don't have any clue what is happening. Pretty really good news. So sorry for the, per, the person um, that are blocked by that. If you are a plugin maintainer and are blocked by this, please try as much as possible to switch to the CD process, which doesn't suffer from this because it doesn't use username and password. It uses uh, ephemeral AP, uh, access token, which is way more secure. Is there any question about the artifactory problem? Something unclear? Am I frozen? Okay. No, no you're no, not no. frozen cool. and seems clear to me. Cool. Uh, we have a user who want to reset password. I think it's an artifactory issue. Oh, no. Um, Mark, what is the status for the SDLC coin? Oh, you send them an email and you are wait. We are waiting from an. No, an email actually, answer? this can be closed. They've they've replied to me. They've solved it. Sorry, oh, I okay. should have closed that. Close okay. it, please. May, may I uh, ask you just to drop a I, note since it was assigned to you? I will happily close it. Yes, I shouldn't have even asked you to close it. I should close it if I'm going to solve a ticket. I should absolutely close it. Cool. Thanks, Mark. Another artifactory issue. Um, so the user have a problem, but they don't even share their username and their email. So there is nothing we can do about that. Uh, I will get this issue open for the milestone and next week in one week, if no answer, then I will close it as usual. Um, Maven 3.9.4 is currently being rolled uh, to the platform. Uh, the Windows agent uh, container images are still missing that Maven version, but that will be uh, uh, later today. And then we will be able to send an announcement to the mailing list and, and done. Um, Hervé, your turn. We have my update Jenkins IO. So the goal is to move the update center to our Azure public cluster. What's the status on your own? So I've created the additional resources to run a mirror bit instance for this service, service uh, namely a storage account to store uh, the update, uh, the Jenkins that I owe, uh, content, all the JSON. Uh, on an Azure file share uh, uh, dust volume. So we can uh, use it uh, from trusted and release and also from this service and use uh, the mirroring service uh, to redirect uh, to R2 uh, buckets where uh, the same content will be exposed uh, as a public bucket. Um, so in addition to the storage account, I have also created a Redis database and a Cinema account. I'm currently working on the deployment on public KHS cluster. Um, working for us. Installation, mirror bit, she in public gates. Okay. Um, just a note while we're there, 
because I think I forgot to comment on your pull request. Could you take care for the initial installation to put everything on read only? Because we shouldn't, uh, unlike get Jenkins IO, uh, for the update center, we shouldn't have to write on the Azure file uh, file system, whether it's on the Apache or the, the other. Okay. Cool, nice work. That one is not an easy one, so nice job. That was also an opportunity to onboard a new contributor to the infrastructure, even if it was a small contribution that was still a nice contribution uh, to keep updated properly the HTTPD Docker image we're using for the mirror bit installations. So thanks, Hervé, for monitoring that new user. And um, yeah, we saw um, a, a, a bunch of minor fixes, but still good fixes on the mirror bits and chart and associated uh, setups. Anything else about that topic, Hervé? Okay, thanks. Uh, next topic is on me. Define infra CI admin service account, but as code on each of our clusters. So um, Digital Ocean, um, uh, I'm almost there. So initially uh, worked on low level Terraform and now I've issued the Terraform module because it looks like that the definition of that service account, its permissions and the definition of a secret token for each cluster is the same everywhere. The only change is the Kubernetes connection that you use to bootstrap the initial user. But then uh, that's, that's the same. Same for the outputs, that will be a kube config that we should put on InfraCI. The goal of that user is to have a technical account used by InfraCI builds for Kubernetes management and only that. So on our own machines, we should keep using uh, the common line uh, cloud-based authentication and the Jenkins controller should keep using a restricted user only to a few namespaces. But that ASA, infra CI admin SA is an administrator cluster wide. So for Digital Ocean, uh, I was able to run the module successfully, uh, but now uh, I tested it locally. It worked as expected, connection and kube config included, but now I'm waiting for a new deployment with the DOCTL command line installed in the Terraform environment. It was missing because we were using direct connection to Digital Ocean API. But now we have to use DOCTL for the bootstrap of that user to be added to Terraform environment. So almost there. And uh, Azure is, in, is work in progress. So I was able to have a successful Terraform plan. So now the next step will be open the pull request and see if it deploys as usual. Because the local test with my user, same problem that might need a bootstrap. And then the last candidate will be AWS. So to do for this one, but with the Terraform module that should be easier. Is there any question here? Okay, next one is PKG Jenkins IO. So I've created a dedicated issue because there were some analysis, initial analysis work like Hervé did with the update center, uh, but that time for PKG. Most, so the goal is to move the PKG Jenkins IO uh, website, at least the, the origin one, which is the backend for the, uh, with Fastly in front to public gates. That's the same idea as the update center work. Um, the first point is it looks like uh, there is a partial work which is already done and uh, during the release process inside Azure already. The amount of uh, tasks that are run on the remote machine is really low, um, but we still need an Apache server. And, um, I'm in the process of preparing a mirror bit system with the same, uh, let's say, uh, motivation as the update center. We want to provide the package indexes through redirections 
So we can provide that to China or any uh, lo location on the world which are not close in terms of network latency from uh, US East. That might need once done to change the way we're using Fastly for that website. We might want to use Fastly as a destination mirror instead of CDN in front of the web service. We don't want Fastly to cache the redirections because this redirection depends on the client, not on the server. So we might need a change of topology. Right now, I propose that the first step will be to deploy uh, the, the Helm chart with the mirror bits and start with Apache only. And then we'll see if we can change the topology of the, of the service. Uh, that analysis work was also a great rethink about some choices that has been made for distributing Jenkins packages and Jenkins plugins. Somehow, we have a split between what is distributed through get Jenkins IO, which are the binaries, while update center and package Jenkins IO are only providing indexes, meaning kind of text file, EV text files, but still text files. Um, that could have consequences and some or there might be opportunities in the future to merge these elements, uh, either having one distribution service for Jenkins packages and one distribution service for plugins, but the update center could be merged with, part, with the HPI plugin, given the way we are using this redirection. Uh, my guess is that that will depend on how R2 is used with the work from Hervé, because again, the goal is to be sure that we can provide mirrors that we control, but somehow the mirrors we control could also have all the HPI and all the EV data, and that could be used as the last fallback mirrors. So there might be opportunity to simplify the installation. Um, given the priorities we have now, that issue will be installing mirror bits here, I will try to test if I can reuse the same Redis instance as the one that Hervé created, but with a secondary database, because Redis managed instance in Azure can support up to 16 databases, given that we pay per instance and per amount of request, that will be a way to avoid spending too much money. Uh, if it works, then that mirror bits won't be used immediately. Uh, I will try to scale it to zero and we'll only use the Apache server so then I can, the next step will be to patch in the release process. So it also updates data on that new service. Is there any question on this one? Uh, use mirror bits, but scale, but only the Apache file service at first. Um, Okay, Stefan, your turn, unless there is any question for PKG. Uh, by the way, PKG and updates are uh, part of the Ubuntu 22.04 campaign. I've created this splitted issue and removed from the current milestone the Ubuntu 22 issue. As soon as we'll have moved both services, we could close the Ubuntu 22 issues. Stefan, your turn. Yes. So I run 64 on public gates. Um, yes, I did migrate Jenkins.io um, and and the, the version for, if you go down, oh, there's checkbox. You missed the checkbox. Oh, sorry. Okay. Can you and, also and, add mm -hmm. comment when you go saying, I did that before checking checkboxes because only message with checkboxes is hard to follow. Uh, oh, timeline. sorry. So there is Improvement a ZH the version. Yes. The ZH version and the Jenkins IO version that are part of the same uh, uh, M chart have been migrated to uh, the IRM64 um, not pool, sorry. And I'm working right now on the pipeline library, shared pipeline library that is building uh, our images to be able to build multi-architecture uh, uh, during the same process and to uh, be able to have uh, both AMD64 AMD and ARM64 for the same images and be able to migrate them easily. 
for wiki cool. yes um were you able to check the there is a, um, a service, a web service related to plugin Jenkins IO in the cluster. And I believe it's also using Nginx image. So that one could be next week also migrated on IRM64. What do you think? Okay, of course, yes. If it's an Nginx, that could be done. I will be out of the, of the office on the, uh, until Thursday. So, but that, it's okay. Okay. That could be migrated as for today. Any question? Something else on that topic? So, Stefan, uh, you continue working on this one. Is that correct? Yes, and uh, uh, but maybe as a second task because we may have to switch the Java twenty one. Oh yes, true that. Okay. Perfect. So worst case, we can put that on hold then. Putting on hold until GDK 21 deployment is, is done. Cool, thanks. Uh, any other question? Okay, next item, Matomo. So here, uh, Hervé, is it okay for you for the upcoming milestone to share the burden? So are you still okay to try to create the MySQ MySQL Manage instance on Azure uh, Cloud? I started to look into it. Um, we have to, um, to decide of uh, virtual subnet and everything like that for this uh, flexible server. Yes, uh, use the same architectural decisions as what we did for the PostgreSQL public database. Yeah. Uh, as far as I remember, you need to create a dedicated subnet for the many, for the flexible servers. They need to control that subnet at all. I went for the flexible server as the single server is deprecated and will be retried soon. So no. Yes. We... So you need flexible and where's their own subnet, correct? A uh, flexible instance to create. And then on my side, uh, I'm going to take the, see uh, wh why are the builds of the Docker image and chart and stuff uh, failing or not. Uh, my secret plan is to see if we can use RM64 image. Uh, Docker image and Elm chart. Is that okay for you? Yes. Any question, clarification? No, oh, okay. Um, plugin site issue is 502. Hervé, can you give us a head up on this one? Um, I've looked at the uh, Fastly uh, interface uh, admin, and uh, I saw that uh, every three hours we've got these uh, errors. I'm wondering if Fastly is caching, caching and reserving and serving again uh, this error to the client. Um, looking into this, I also saw uh, a possible integration between Fastly and Datadog. So we have to investigate and see if okay. we can avoid caching error and add monitoring. Okay, these are two tasks. We have to first understand the problem. I mean, yeah. Datadog is a really good idea that will help, but it, it won't give you this, the problem. It will just say there is a problem and you already saw it. So um, continue to diagnose and uh, improvement integrating firstly with data, I mean, that's what I said about all the fancy integration with whatever monitoring tool. When, I mean, you already did the manually. Next time, we w that will just help us to catch earlier the issue. But now we have the issue, we need to fix it. And that's the limit of what Datadog or any tools can do here. That's why I want to do in one time fix and then integrate. Unless we split the burden again. 
Uh, I don't mind working on the analysis. If you need help, your call. Um, Mark, can you give us an update on the artifactory bandwidth reduction option? Yeah, so we had good news and bad news. The good news is that bandwidth reduction worked in the builds that we ran. The we saw and still see to this day that Maven Central is being read for certain repositories. So that's a plus. We've I see in the DigitalOcean logs uh, all still that they are being read from read from the central repo, not from our cache. So that's the plus side. On the minus side, there were some failure messages that we have to diagnose that have not yet been diagnosed. Okay. Uh, bad news still need to be diagnosed. Do you need help on that topic, uh, Mark? At this point, I think it's it's okay. We'll discuss with uh, JFrog later today, actually. Mm -hmm. Any other question? Clarification, okay. ATH builds commonly become unresponsive. Um, Stefan, that will be for you. Um, you had a wonderful idea that we should use. Uh, now that you have played with Pipeline during the past two days. Yeah, almost the king be, of Pipeline, yes. Exactly, now you are the king of Groovy <laughs> syntax. So you should be able to propose a pull request, if it's okay for you, to the ATH Jenkins file. That would that would allow to run on spot instance during the first run, and if it has to retry, then it will switch to a, an on-demand instance. I've already set the labels and the template on CI Jenkins IO, so uh, yeah, you have the the perfect ground for starting on this one. That should be three to four line of pipeline changes. Oh, don't tell me that. I will I will freak out if I put ten lines. I haven't say only, I say that should be around. Yeah, each time you say that should be easy, I'm, I'm dying myself. So, okay. I, I haven't said easy, I haven't yeah, put okay. any qualificative. I say that should be around three to four lines. Okay, I we'll give see. You the solution, you have to find the question. <laughs> um, is that okay for you, Stefan? Yes, then... yes. Uh, oh, we agree that first Java, then HH or AIM, ARM. For the for the priority oh, um, that, that that one is uh, not really top priority and if you have to go on holidays we will take over so, so GDK, java. java first irm then and that one a third okay right now there is no more problem on the ath it's working as expected i haven't checked the billing yet uh, I will add a message later today or tomorrow on the impact of switching from no spot to on demand, to full spot to on demand, sorry. Um, in, next step, VM improve common prompts to avoid confusion between services. I've done nothing on that, sorry. Okay, no one is assigned. So by default, I consider you won't have time. And if I have time, I will take it. Okay. If I don't, that will stay in the uh, in in that uh, gray area. Uh, nothing done. Uh, still to do. This allow issue creation in event project type. Mark, I might need help on this one. I'm not sure. It's a kind of oh, Daniel did something. I have no idea what is. I don't understand the issue at all. It's something in Jira administration, so I'm not sure. Yeah, but given given Daniel's comment that he's done the switch, um, maybe that is in fact done. I'm gonna ask uh, Alex if it's okay. Issue closable. It looks like it's been. Okay, I'm gonna ask. Uh, yeah, Alex will close it if, as uh, since he's the requester. Great. Cool. Thanks. 
um, should be closable. Uh, AWS decreased cost for summer 2023. So that one is an epic. I propose to remove it from the milestones since it depends only on PKG and update change. And there is a subsequent issue uh, right now on the, um, on the backlog around S3 garbage collection. So if no one object, we will consider that issue an epic and we will move it outside. Is that okay for everyone? Yes. Considered epic moving out of milestones like the Ubuntu 22.04 campaign. Uh, LF status page redirect cache may uh, cache too lo for too long. This is um, my task and no progress on it. Okay. Uh, Daniel's asked, please ask LF for to investigate, but it's just, it's an investigation that I, I'm still not clear the, the net benefit. Okay. And remove IP restriction on bounds or migrate to VPN still to be done. So again, it's about the ending and finishing the cleanup of the former networks and allowing trusted CI to be protected by the VPN instead of uh, IP restriction. Okay, so let's have a look on the new issues. The biggest one is GDK21. I believe we don't have an issue yet. Nope, we don't. Okay, so Mark, can you give us an, a quick explanation? And I will have to take care or Stefan, or both of us uh, to create an issue to track the GDK 21. Right, so, so we've, got a, we've got a plan that has been discussed with the board and with uh, the officers suggesting that by October 31, we would like to have uh, Jenkins weekly release that supports Java 21. That matches with the mid-September release of Java 21 by the Open JDK project. Um, so, in order to do that, though, we need Java 21 early access bits available in the Jenkins infrastructure. And so, just like we have Java 8, 11, 17, and 19 available now, we need 21 available. Okay. Um... So we'll need help because I wasn't able to find an easy way to get the GDK21. It looks like Timurin is proposing uh, on a hidden way some pre-releases. Do we have details or help on that area? So, so it's uh, the only way that I know of to get 21 right now. So once they've released September 19, then we should be able to get it the usual ways for Tamarin. But to get it now, what I've had to do is I download it from openjdk.net, where they have a download for AMD64 um, Linux, Linux machines. They also have it for Windows 64-bit machines. They do not have it available from openjdk.net for ARM64. And I don't expect them to have it available or for System 390, or for PowerPC, or for Risk v right? It's only available for AMD64 and for um, Linux and Windows. I don't think they even have it from OpenJDK.net for the Mac OS platforms that are running on M1. Let me double check just to be sure. Just open JDK, AMD64. Next distribution. That might be an obstacle. However, um, I thought there was a, a pre-release program access, which it doesn't. So, uh, Stefan, uh, you will have to check with Bruno and Hai. We were able to locate uh, Timurin uh, early releases that are dated from uh, end of July of the new Timurin GDK21. Because the challenge here will be, how oh, can we make sure that we use the proper Linux and Intel uh, capability for the GDK22 templates, because we have IRM64 agent 21. capabilities. Uh, 21, sorry. 
So, so that part, I'm not understanding why we need, to, I mean, if Tamarin's available now, we should absolutely take it. I agree wholeheartedly. But if it's not available, I don't see why we can't just take the binaries from OpenJDK's early access not, process. It's not officially available from the Tamarin page, but their GitHub repository, which are delivering the binary releases, have pre-release candidates. It's just that it's they they are not complete. So AMD is on one of the pre-releases, which is updated uh, sometimes. Sometimes you only have Windows. Sometimes you only have ARM64. Sometimes you have all Linux. It doesn't make sense for me, but they don't publish all the binary bits on each pre-release candidate. Mm -hmm. So that might need a bit of research because we want to install this at least on Linux, ideally on the whole platform. And so we might have some tricks to bypass the usual uh, Timurin release resolution that we use because it uses functions that provide the direct links. So we might need to cheat a little <coughs> bit. Uh, so Stefan. Okay. okay. Maybe a first step will be not installing it on the agent and instead use Jenkins tool capability and define a tool that would only run when it's an AMD64 Linux machine. And we can we might get started with this one. Okay. Yeah, Timurin. so so the version on openjdk dot on jdk.java.net is dated August 3, so five days ago. Okay. Yeah, and that's the I think that's the latest on Timurin. Uh, yeah, it's, it's it's their build, their internal build number thirty four. So as you can see, I'm opening on the screen the pre-releases from the nightly builds of the Timurin for twenty one distribution. Good. And oh, that one is complete finally. <clears throat> oh, okay. good. Okay. All right. So so we could even be using Timurin builds then, even better. Okay, great. Yeah, because maybe we will, uh, don't have to change anything. Almost. Right. Well, uh, uh, Tamarin builds for us are much better than OpenJDK builds just because we will eventually switch to Tamarin. Why not switch now? So we'll have Packer image. We will need the Windows image, a container image, Win, uh, VMs all, and the tools. Linux container. We have the tool. Uh, that's a really good start. Uh, question, do we replace the existing GDK 19? Do we remove them? I don't think we can replace or remove because we've got builds that reference them. And if we take, if we were to take them away, we will surprise the consumers whose builds will now break. Yeah, we need to change the end of life and, and prepare it. And Yeah, yes. I mean... Java 19 is off support now. So Oracle is no longer issuing patches. So we we should correctly deprecate it, but I think this is a good excuse to go through the deprecation process yeah. and declare end of life with an orderly end. Yeah, but maybe 21 yeah. first and then deprecating. Exactly, yeah, right. Exactly. So you have to add 21. So Stefan, that's your new top priority that will start by creating an issue explaining what we want to do. You can yes. copy paste from the GDK 19 if you want. That's exactly what I had in my head. Perfect. Stefan takes it. Um, you can already, you can remove the triage and add it directly to the new milestone for the 22. Is there something the else to add? 22. Tuesday, 22 of August. Oh, sorry, that was the date I thought about the GDK. <laughs> Good try. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is there something else to add on the GDK 21 uh, port? No, okay. I believe there is something I will want to add to the upcoming milestone then that will be using GDK 17 as the default controller and agent uh, GD GVM. I'm willing to take it, but anyone interested is uh, absolutely welcome to to get there. Okay. 
TDK 17 for controller plus agents. Great. Okay, so I'm adding this one directly to the new milestone. Removing try age. Okay. Um, and since it's, I'm adding it because we will have a two weeks milestone. Um, finally, do we have, so, sorry. Uh, do you have other new topic you want to add? Um, Hervé, eventually Blue Ocean, right? Yeah. Um, uh, I saw some pull request around uh, Blue Ocean and uh, some exchange between uh, developers, which made me uh, remind, uh, which made, uh, which remind me that I have uh, an old issue to do. Uh, migrate the uh, version to see to see public and to run from instead mm -hmm. of uh, dedicated uh, controller somewhere. Okay, so I'm adding it to you. Um, and Hervé, help us out on or help me out on that one. If we just turned off that dedicated controller, would it critically damage? Olivier Lamy and his work on Blue Ocean? We want to uh, allow him to have a working. Uh, okay. So it would, it would be harmful to him. So we, we absolutely want to do the migration, not just the disable. Got yeah. it. Thanks. Yes. Um, if that's okay for everyone, I propose, Hervé, to create a new top level directory organization scanning a uh, name blue ocean that will contain the yeah. build uh, yeah. eventually it's builds from this one uh, the reason i'm asking for that is to avoid having to trigger a scan of the plugins or core or tools because we have a critical or at least that could be an annoyance and while i believe you might need to iterate quickly so if there is no objection, I propose that you create a top level directory uh, directly uh, on CI Jenkins IO. Okay. Um, another point I don't know if CI Blue Ocean IO is publishing artifacts, Docker image, artifact, or repo. If it does, we will have to only add the non publishing part on CI Jenkins IO. And we must not publish anything from CI Jenkins IO at all. So if they publish artifacts, then you need to start the discussion on the issue. We don't know which one. I believe there might be the Docker image. And ideally, that image shouldn't be built anymore as per the SIG uh, platform. If you find anything, don't hesitate to challenge the fact that these artifacts should not be deployed because that should only be a set of plugins that are already built either with CD or manually. The reason is these are public controller, so no credential. We can consider this controller being active every day. So anything that could be public is dangerous. I would have used uh, infra.ci if I had to publish anything, but uh, I'll... First, the question is, do we need to release and yes, why? I will discuss it on... It's a good way to have some cleaning in. Exactly. No no worries. If it tries to deploy anything from CI Jenkins, it will fail because it won't find a credential. So you can start by migrating. And if you see build failure during what will be deployment phase, then you can ask the question. Cool, thanks. So, um, uh, what's the top level folder on CI Jenkins IO or scan? But I believe a folder will be easier. Uh, no deployment on CI Jenkins IO. We have to challenge any deployment of any artifact done on CI Blue Ocean.io. Let's ask Olivier Lamy. Nice, thanks, Hervé. Something else to add on that topic? <laughs> Do you have other topics you want to bring, or uh, should we go uh, under the suffering of Tri H? 
or we could finish a bit earlier with them. Um, yes, so if uh, we have the third, so remove remnant of the legacy Azure overlap virtual network, that one will be the last mile, so I keep it as tray edge for next time. Uh, same for the VPN, because you need to delete the VPN in order to remove the, the network. However, I'm going to add the migrate third CI Jenkins IO from network uh, to the in the upcoming days. That's the same as what we did with CI and Trusted. Um, uh, this issue means at least changing the network. And my proposal is also to change the virtual machine used by third CI. We know by experience that we only require uh, to have uh, the, um, um, the, the Jenkins home, and we will keep the holder machine if we have a system level, let's say, customization, because I believe the Gensec team might have played with some non as code elements. But the goal is to have a version two, gener a generation version two of virtual machine, which can be way faster. Okay. Okay, and what do we have in triage area? Kubernetes 1.26 for later. Move public IP to a distinct resource group for later. Okay. I don't see anything else interesting. That's really a lot of tasks. So is there something else you want to add or we can proceed? We will finish three minutes early. <laughs> But we won't be late. Okay, yes, I'm stopping okay. this. Yes? Yeah. And this case, it's uh, out of recorder. Sorry? I wanted to, to speak about uh, GTC. Yes. We don't okay. um, we've uh, tried uh, the GTC uh, conference, include uh, integrated in elements. Uh, so the desktop uh, tools we are using to discuss on uh, matrix slash IRC. Uh, it works great. Um, and we can, I, 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 I was thinking we might uh, try it to for the infra meeting. So it could be integrated uh, directly in the Jenkins infra uh, channel, for example. So everyone can join it easily. There is no login uh, needed, no account, and uh, we can. Uh, I have to try it on my own account, but we can use YouTube live stream to record the meetings. So it can be. Uh, uh, there are a lot of options. Uh, quite nice uh, using it uh, between this and Zoom. Uh, uh, it has some benefits i think uh, we can adjust uh, more easily the quality of the of the stream etc so yeah uh, i'd like to test a bit more and then try a meeting on gt instead of zoom and later it can be depending on how it works it can be extended to other uh, scg maybe it'd be easier than zoom and with the current uh, news about uh, Zoom and their uh, term of service, it can Yeah. <laughs> yes, Zoom is going to use IA to train their own LLM mm -hmm. based on the content of the meetings. Yeah. Yes, so, that's, and that's, that's not, I think yes. It's already is the case right now, but. Uh... Yes, <laughs> that's already the case. And they don't care if you accept or not. Uh, they, they have added a, a set of non really privacy respectful uh, elements about the meetings. And also, socially speaking, we are an open company and we want people to be uh, at ease. And Zoom is currently calling all the employee to go back working from the office. Yes, it's not a joke. <laughs> I'm dead serious. So, that start to be enough information, not mentioning their past with the Chinese web security spying on the meetings. 
So yeah, I think I agree with Hervé. Uh, if Chitsi is able to provide the same feature set for uh, these meetings that we have once a week, and including recording, that could be a great, uh, let's say, a great uh, privacy and user respectful tool instead. The quality was good on what we tried. I propose that we try recording some private meeting with the Jitsi we have on our private uh, channel survey. Uh, we have two prerequisites. Uh, so the one that Hervé uh, uh, mentioned that need to be validated by the board mark because that require a YouTube account. There is a feature named live record, I believe. Am I correct, uh, Hervé? Yes, so live, you have to activate in the YouTube account the live streaming and there is a 24 hour uh, waiting period to be activated. The, altern the alternative could be using uh, something like uh, OBS Studio to to get the host or someone someone else uh, recording locally the meeting, then so, uploading to, upload to. So, but we do we already have a Jenkins CI account and it already places. So if and, and I've got I've got permission to upload to it and I believe you do as well, Damien, right? Yes. So is there a reason we couldn't just use that YouTube account as the as the live streaming location? Uh, I don't want to make that decision unilaterally because ah, the live record uh, term of usage are a bit different uh, than just uploading. Okay. I don't mind. It's just I don't want to take that decision alone or just as the infra SIG. So that's why I want the validation, a formal validation. Uh, in case there is an objection or something we didn't think about, but I don't see any problem on doing that. Okay, so next board meeting is in two weeks. Okay. And so we've got time to prepare for an agenda, put an agenda item on the board meeting, and the board meeting notes as an experiment are stored on HackMD right now. Nice. <laughs> so the, the thing I see with uh, using YouTube uh, for live streaming is that it cut out the upload the uh, step later right yep. i think it's very desirable i love the idea of live streaming it uh, so long as we understand that we are being live streamed and we uh, agree that <laughs> that if someone shares something sensitive it has been live streamed and it will have to be <laughs> accepted that it was shared yeah good point so don't don't screen share your credentials <laughs> during a live stream <laughs> Uh, really low quality <laughs> right right exactly. <laughs> at very because because we hope that image manipulation programs will not be able to improve the quality enough to make it attack not too fast right. at least i, I right. think that all police uh based ser series on television were able to zoom in on whatever a bunch of pixels right <laughs> immediately and then it's flawlessly perfectly in fact even if they're blanked out i can do that of course these are the best police shows right i don't know if you saw that but there is a <laughs> project uh, to depixelate uh, uh, screenshots if you know the police the font you give you give it uh, an example of the font then the pixelated the uh, image and they can Extra. Not, it's not really readable, but you can describe it when you. Uh, it. Oh, yeah. I've students isn't a good solution now. I've like students who are trying, who are working on a PhD process where they try, they continue the work I did a few years ago with the first chat GPT, where they are trying to insert uh, weird data in the training models. So then you can influence the way this system is working and they are using that one as an example and they are manipulating real life data. So it starts to detect writings that are on the real writing, but writing based on the training model, training data sets. That's really so impressive. I'm not sure the program I'm speaking of was using uh, LLM or anything like that. I'm not sure. Okay. So I, I did have a question before we end. And yes. it's actually related to Jenkins Infra. Damien, could you open up the the weekly release process that's running and confirm it's still running? Yes. Just just um, for uh, for our sake to see that yes, it's still operational. Okay. And while I'm opening it, just one last thing: we need to my. I think in order to use Jitsi for the Jenkins Infra IRC, I think we might have to migrate out from 
IRC to uh, uh, whatever bridge room it is. Otherwise, I'm not sure the JTC link might work. I'm not sure that has to be confirmed. We might need to add that requirement to whatever we proposed. Okay. Hervé, you're responsible for checking. <laughs> Uh, and I don't mind, we try the YouTube recording with our, uh, either yours or mine account, just we have a way to know the what feature do we need to, to test. Uh, the process is still running. Good, very good. That's all I wanted to see. Perfect. And it's preparing release, so still one hour and 15 minutes left. Excellent. Thank you. That's all I needed. Thanks very much. Thanks, folks. That means, uh, Stefan, you will update in France CI only tomorrow with the weekly release. Yes. Anything else? Okay, I'm stopping the recording. See you in two weeks. Bye.